Welcome back to the Hot Diggity Dog Read to Your Dog at Home series. Now we're at chapter 24 and we see the Baba Yaga. What is she up to? Chapter 24. She was watching him through a tiny hole she had drilled in his door. Ever since the night outing disaster, she had positioned a chair outside his room. She wore an ocular apparatus with two pairs of spectacles with very thick lenses. When she pressed a button, the lenses moved in and out, making a low humming sound. She rarely left her post, but sat listening to Russian opera and studying her handbook. Under surveillance, Humboldt slept fitfully, his heart thumping like a mallet in his chest. He was allowed out only for short intervals to eat and do his exercises. But more often than not, she hovered nearby. One day, Humboldt awoke from a nap and felt something heavy at the end of his bed. It was the Baba Yaga, her glossy eyes pinned on him, the silence shrouded in sardine smells. He dearly hoped that the wind would bring the blossom of Kloof's brown feathery body back to his windowsill. He waited and waited in vain. At mealtime, the Baba Yaga led him into the kitchen where he was put to work, stirring a large vat of fine beans and colored beans. Faster, splatter, she'd say, stir it conspicuously. One day he saw his chance to dump a few tablespoons of the antacid powder into her stew which rendered her out of commission all the next day, moaning and groaning with the collie wobbles. Eventually, she fell into a deep sleep under the hairy wombat lamp. As she sprawled on the living room couch, grumbling in her sleep, Humboldt's eyes fell on the handbook of spells lying open on the floor. Under the cat's unified stare, he began to read her scrawled notes. Never let a troll know you plan to eat him. Never. Number two, always be as nice as possible, even if it kills you. Number three, to prepare troll, begin by removing the nightcap. Humble's eyes fluttered over the resting until he came to the last instruction, partially optional. The words began to blur, and the room spun. He nearly keeled over onto one of the Abyssinian cats. He looked over at the Baba Yaga, shuddering in her sleep. Time was running out. He read on. On one page, she had written a chopping list and the dates and times for the upcoming coal deliveries. One section of the handbook was heavily underlined, the ink like thick black eyebrows. What had she found so fascinating? Spells for when you're scared of the dark. Carefully he read the notes on the margin beside the spells. This spell needs more practice. Never go into a dark room alone. Never. Or you may not survive. An idea flashed across Humboldt's mind. A plan, or even with the room. The Baba Yaga sputtered away. He dropped the handbook just as she fixed her glassy green eyes on him. My little Humboldt, she said, straightening her cap. Oh, so here we are, the two of us. How cozy. Oh, yes. Uh, how was your sleep? I've been waiting for you to wake up for ages. By the way, have you ever been into that room? Heh, what room is that, my little humble? The room of galloping darkness. She sat up quickly. Why would I want to go in that room? She cooed. Maybe we could play a little game. What happens to the loser? There is no loser. Really? How mysterious of you, little humble. The game starts with a riddle. It's perfect 
for you. The Baba Yaga rubbed her bony hands together. Okay, here's the question. What can you find and only lose in the dark? I don't know. Sardines? Spectacles? No, keep guessing. Sakatash? You're getting closer. Hey, wouldn't you like to try and find out for yourself? Oh, can I? The Baba Yaga stood up. Really? Humboldt reached for one of the musty socks that hung over the back of the couch. Here, put this on. It's part of the game. Humboldt tied it around her head, covering her eyes. Oh, Humboldt, we're quite a fun sort of troll, aren't you? Are there prizes with sardines? Humboldt led her through the galloping darkness and opened the door. Here, go on, take a step. The prize is waiting. The Baba Yaga stepped into the room. Humble followed her into the vast darkness and kept his hand on the doorknob. He removed her blindfold. Where did you go? Where am I? Answer me. He felt a breeze as her hands flailed about in the darkness. Oh, I'm just close by. I'm right over here. Everything's fine. Have you found the answer yet? The thing that you can find and only lose in the dark? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. What have you brought me in here for? Get me out of here. As the Baba Yaga groped farther from the door, Humboldt turned the knob a whisper and quietly exited into the hallway. He had to move quickly. He grabbed several cats and tucked them under his arms. He ran into the kitchen and took a saw from the drawer of specially sharp instruments, then hurried down the stairs to the front door. He could hear the Baba Yaga's screams echoing down the stairs. At the front door, he quickly stacked the stiff cats, one on top of the other, to create a ladder. He climbed on their backs until he stood on the very top one. From here, he could finally reach the bolts. He began to saw back and forth, back and forth, at the heavy iron bolts. It was hard, hard work. He managed to get to the first one, but three still remained. He started on the second bolt, sawing furiously, metal scraping metal, filings dusting the air. Fear of the dark. That sardine smell again. It was a Baba Yaga right behind him. Is that the answer you were looking for? My little Humboldt. Humboldt dropped his saw. He dared not look at her. Don't forget, little Humboldt. No one leaves. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you for the next chapter of the Adventures of Humboldt. Hop on board. <laughs>